Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is how to do a correlation in Excel. Um, so there are multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to show a, a slightly more manual way of doing it just because I think it, it's nice in the way I, I get the output. All right, so what we have here is a graph that we um, did and I showed you how to do this on a previous video. So I'll put a link right here um, for you to get to that. And essentially we have um, predicted one RM of the biceps curl, so predicted one repetition maximum, and then we have the actual biceps one repetition maximum. So um, the graph looks good, the data looks like it's uh, sort of one goes with the other, um, but we need to look at a actual statistical test to tell us whether that's true or not. Um, so a correlation is the test that we would want to do. Um, so we need to do a couple of different calculations to make this work. First one, let's do um, a, it's a Pearson's correlation coefficient that we're going to be calculating, so Pearson correlation. And so this one's pretty easy, just type equals and then type, start typing Pearson and it's going to pop up right here. So the Pearson, uh, Pearson coefficient um, R value is what we're trying to get. And it wants us to highlight the first array, uh, type a comma, and then the second array. So the arrays are the two data sets. So right here we have our predicted values and right here we have our measured values. Those are our two data sets. So I'll highlight just the numbers of the predicted data sets. I'll hit a comma to move from array one to array two. And then I'll highlight the actual measured um, 1RM values. And then we can just hit enter to get out of that. So our Pearson correlation is really, really strong. 0.92, that's a really high number for that. Um, but now we also need to calculate our p-value, so the probability of this being, uh, for lack of better terms, uh, it's a sort of a layman's way of thinking about this, but the probability of this being a true result versus um, a random chance result. Um, so for this to work the way I'm going to show you, um, we need to know what our sample size is, so we need to know what n equals, so how many people were in um, the data set. And because all the people in the predicted and all the people in the measured 1RM um, categories or um, conditions are the same people, um, we can just count how many we have in one of those and know how many people we have. So if you type equal and then start typing count, and so count's going to count the number of cells within the range that you highlight that have numbers in them. Um, so we can use that to, we, and so open parentheses to start the, the function, highlight either one of our two variables and do an end parenthesis and hit enter. So we have 26 people, which we know because we have the participant IDs counting from 1 to 26. So that it worked out correctly. So we have our Pearson co uh, coefficient, we have our n value, which is 26 people. Um, and then we have this um, calculation that I already put in prior to starting this uh, recording. And um, what this actually is, is our correlation p-value. And so it, it's not, it doesn't have accurate numbers right now, which is why it's just one. Um, but if you look at this, this formula up here. This is the formula I have in there. That's This is where I'm saying it's a little bit of a manual way of doing it. There are other ways using the software and using their statistics packages in Excel um, to do this. I like doing it this way because it just puts the p-value in a single cell and uh, it's really easy to use a formula once you have it typed out. Um, I've been copying and pasting this formula from one Excel document to another for the last several years since I originally found it, figured out how it works, and started using it. So to be honest, it's a little bit out of my head now how it all works, um, so it, it's also beyond the scope of this video, but it does work. It, I've checked it against several software packages doing correlations, and it gives very good results. Um, so what we need though for this to work is we need this Pearson correlation coefficient, and we need the uh, sample size, which is the reason why we calculated those two first. All right, and so, if you're looking at this formula, we essentially have two different cells that it keeps pulling um, data from. So um, it's 
I copied from another spreadsheet so it's looking at random cells in this spreadsheet but those are the cells in that spreadsheet that um, where our data this these two data points are now so m2 is the Pearson co correlation coefficient so in this sheet it is in f5 and then our our sample size is in f8 so let's go back here change all the m2s to F5s and all the C2s in this to F8s. And hit enter. And so we get this number here. Um, so if you're not used to seeing um, uh, Scientific notation, that's what this is. It means we have a we have a negative exponent, negative 12, which means it's a really small number, which we would expect to have a very small p-value here, considering the r value is so, so high. Um, so to make this something a little more meaningful to those of you not used to seeing this, we're gonna just format this cell. So just click the cell, right click, and then go to format cell. And let's change it from general, which gives us the um, scientific notation and change it to number and we're going to need a lot of decimals so I'm just going to make it something crazy high like 10 decimal places um, so that you just do the up arrow to do that and then click OK um, and you can see that the value is even smaller than that so let's see how far we have to go out to get oops, wrong way, to get a okay so um, you can see here that the p-value for this correlation um, is way below 0.05 which is the standard cutoff for statistical significance and so that means that um, this uh, Pearson correlation uh, this R value this 0.92 that we got is something we can interpret um, statistically speaking and that what all this tells us is that there is a high correlation between predicted 1RM biceps curl and the actual measured 1RM biceps curl all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another video in this series that's going to show how to um, make this graph look a little prettier, and I've already made a video um, that showed how to make this sort of basic graph. All right, thank you.